Sairam, and welcome to our very first episode of Chai with Sai, season two. We're so glad to have you all here today with us, and to kickstart a new season and a new year, we have just the right topic, one that hits close to home, but also something for all of us to remember. We will start off our new season with the topic, my Sai and I. And we figured there's no better person to discuss about and shed some light and share some valuable, precious experiences on this topic than our very own chairman, Uncle Mohana. Uh, so, Uncle Mohana, welcome, welcome in. It's such a pleasure to have you here. It's such an honor. Um, for those of you who may not be aware, Uncle Mona is someone who personally I look up to as such a huge inspiration. Uh, he has been a service coordinator in the Banda Klang Center for several years, and currently he is the SSBC Banda Klang Chairman. And with that, I assume comes a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. Would that not, Uncle? Uh, Sairam, thank you very much for this opportunity given for this uh, podcast. Uh, basically, it is. Um, I would rather say it is a. It's a. A pleasure to serve the organization instead of our responsibilities. So, the role of chairman it is just uh, monitoring, I mean, coordinating things. Mm -hmm. But it is uh, everything is done by Swami and assisted by all that uh, instruments of uh, Swami, which is the devotees and all other members. Right. And before we proceed, also, we would love to get to know you a little better. So, would you please share a little more about yourself? Okay, my name, my name is Mohana Kumar Supaya. My father is, we are from a family of mediocre family. I was first introduced to Swami by mere accident. So what I would rather say it is I just come and involve in the activities. And eventually I got interest into this organization, all that uh, Seva activities. Uh, here I need to take the opportunity to thank my parents my father and mother, as well as my siblings, together with my family for giving uh, blessings and support, whatever things I'm doing. So um, how I started, simple. I just go and help them to clean up the, uh, the budget halls before they set up the things. Over a period of that, what I realized it is, it's become it's part of my uh, regular activity. Mm. And every time it says, look, uh, looking forward that Thursday, for us to do the center cleaning and um, everybody enjoys. It's a, not a work actually, it is just a joyous moment. It's like probably a, a meetup sessions mm. or kind of a jamming session for us at that time. So That's how the it's act come of to. service itself became a fun activity. Not only did it bring you closer with people that you were around at the time, but also brought you closer to Swami in, in a yeah. way as well, right? That's beautiful. And it, I think a lot of us can relate with the fact that you said you came into Swami, to know Swami by complete chance, mm. just by luck, out of nowhere. Uh, I think a lot of us can relate to that. Myself as well, came into Swami just out of nowhere. He just comes into your life and the next thing you know, you've never felt such love in and around Him, right? And I suppose uh, b before we hit home with some, uh, some deeper questions, I'd say, <laughs> uh, let's start off with a, a short icebreaker right? okay. to get to know yourself a little better. So, something I like to ask new people when I meet them for the first time is to ask them, what are three of your best qualities? Okay. Uh, if you ask me the three best qualities, it is... I can taking be a, a moment to think. Huh? Yeah, so I need to be, see because like I never do self-analysis. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me, I look at the situations... Uh, my best quality it is I dare to take risk whatever it is okay the first thing it is sometimes people take time to decide but I'll take very short moment to take the risk and move forward the second thing it is continue from that uh, attitude it is I'll work out whatever means to achieve that particular goal there are two things which is always make me uh, having a good habits in myself the Third thing, if you were say, it is when I put the effort that other resources comes by natural, all right? So sometimes there is a, some of them may not be achieved, but that becomes my experiences. 
So subsequent events, when I come across that similar situations, I can succeed and I know what are the things to avoid. Right. So, so it's more of... Um, risk taker. Being a, a massive risk taker. Uh, having faith in putting oh, your own effort. Absolutely on Swami's faith. Absolutely on Swami's faith. Uh, and also the second one you mentioned was um, not giving up. Not giving up. Being very, very Persistence. steadfast. That's lovely. It sets home as your character uh, and how you have managed to accomplish so many things uh, here. And my second question is actually the opposite of that. Uh, what are your three greatest flaws? Okay, the thing it is sometimes I set high expectations, high goal. So when I set high goals, what makes the things is not achievable, it is it is not a goal of myself. It is uh, also uh, relates a few people along it with me, it, be it my family, be it my, I mean, a group of people I am. So they may not able to uh, realize or uh, actualize that uh, the goal which is mm. for them it's too big right, right. Um, so one thing i like to point out here so when i first asked what are your three greatest strengths as comparison to what are your three greatest flaws you may notice you took a while you took a short delay to think of your greatest strengths rather than your greatest weaknesses uh, it's it's funny because i think as people as humans we are all so conditioned to focus on our weaknesses, the things that are that we lack, the, our lack of ability, our lack of strengths. Instead of focusing on our gifts, our strengths, the things that we are good at, right? Uh, and I think we really should make it a point to focus more on our, our time, our energy, and our attention on those particular aspects, on the things that we are good at, right? So if someone asks us again after this, for those listening, if someone asks you, what are you good at? it should come as naturally as it would to point out our own flaws, right? So that's how we know we are aware, uh, we are fully aware of what we are capable of and we have faith in ourselves. And that's a beautiful segue to our topic for today, which as I mentioned, my Sai and I. So Sai and I, it's a, a nice catchphrase, isn't it? It simply means that there is Sai within us. Uh, and as for you, uh, Uncle Mohana, I'd say having so much experience conducting so much service activities throughout all these years, it's been several years uh, in our centre, uh, would you care to share with us some of your most memorable and also perhaps some of your most challenging uh, moments where you could say Swami came in and saved the day or Swami shed some divine light on you? Okay. Right, I'll start with this, my beginning at that when I was in the early 20s. Mm -hmm. So probably I was into the organization in eight, uh, when I was 18. So, but at uh, the age of 20, uh, there was suddenly a, a request for them to make me, uh, to be a MC for a regional Southern camp, Southern region, regional Southern, uh, Southern camp for Johor. So we do not have the kind of technology or that kind of uh, informations, or, or neither I have any experiences. So I don't have all this. I was completely uh, thrown into the sea just to MC that event. Being there, so right, I said, okay, let it do. And then I take a step, and then it is, and quickly I sit down and I line up. I mean, I put uh, my notes, what I need to do. And I'm able to capture the entire event. It is a full day event. So capture the event. So introducing that who is the next program, setting the ground rules, and also uh, uh, after the speaker is finished or the session is finished, summarizing the thing and uh, giving the uh, gist of that uh, what happened, which is I don't know. I never done this. I never watched or anything. And uh, but end of the day, about five o'clock when the event is finished, we supposed to go tea break. So the rain was pouring. And that moment, it's some of that seniors came and told me, it is, you host it very well. It is most memorable moment for me because without any experiences, that's where I can connect. It is, a, I mean, a responsibility is given to me. I just take it and it was driven away entirely led by Swami. Hi, that's so beautiful, Uncle. I'd say it's, it was your first time doing something so huge. So huge? 
crowd of uh, probably hundreds and um, wow. of course stage fear should be there mm. but i managed entire thing very well for a first timer i myself surprised right actually leading on to that uh, i've actually remembered that and i i'd like to bring it up actually i know that for one you are an avid note taker your note taking skills are absolutely impeccable it's no joke uh, and i think that was the birthplace of that where you discovered that you had that ability uh <laughs> probably uh, not so later part of the thing is like usually um, what will happen it is i always take notes when i attend anything classes or whatsoever because i need to reflect on the take home message mm-hmm. so for that purposes so over the period of time what happens it is um and when events happening i started to take notes i mean uh, my phone so which is currently i reduce i stopped because people are complaining it is uh, i'm playing with the phone in whatsapp and so on but actually i take notes every single thing i take notes and i reflect back or if i even i want to refer back i can refer so the note taking it is something it is i learned uh, very young itself so and then immediately i'll share it with the people right so when i share it with the people at least those people who lost focus during that session or who didn't attend the sessions they also get to know what was the content so indirectly some of them it is they really uh, felt they missed that opportunity at attending that free event right it's a uh it's a partial responsibility as well you know giving that the clarity to others when they might not have had the chance to and also giving an opportunity to people who might not have even been present <coughs> in a particular event at yeah. the first place right and i think that's great but is there any other few tips in particular that you'd like to share to people especially since you said this day in this day and age uh, using your phone anywhere pretty much is uh, seen as a sign of disrespect so more often than not uh there are put some particular etiquettes and also some things that you can do to make things easier for yourself to make sure your notes are concise uh and compact with the important information so how do you make sure you get what you need okay uh, the thing is now the technology and applications are there so big use of that so if you make use that application it will help you to complete your task very much faster mm-hmm. so we are talk about gun chart those days gun chart everything we have to have a big uh, uh charts nowadays you could have an applications or have a simple uh, to do list and then tick 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 every day once you complete it so it makes you you are uh, control of yourself and then you achieve your milestone right so now that we've uh, spoken about your most memorable moments right uh that was previously when a past experience that you've been Uh, over the past duration of time right um so currently now with your new found responsibility as a chairman uh, i imagine it must take so much of time and effort especially since that now you are working closely with all the people in our center working with all the different uh, branches of people who are in charge of so many different things so to oversee such an operation on such a huge scale working with all different kind of people you certainly must feel a closer connection to baba right so what such experiences could you tell us uh, as of late that has brought you or made you feel closer that connection to swami okay this is something it's very very uh, personal to me as well okay when a task is given it's just like a, rather than we analyzing the task so we are trying to uh, uh, just think how this is possible kind of things whereas when you are given a responsibility take the responsibility and ask guidance from swami when he asks for the guidance he will give the right thing at the right time and the right with the right resources so that makes you easy and the additional responsibility comes because of that uh, the willingness of us to do that particular role okay and how it makes easy for me it is i listen to people i listen to what they want to say and then i will say what it's my rationally to come a reasons so a lot of situation it is the decision making process was not shared to others in my case i always rationalize and show the de- why the particular decision is made and it makes people are more comfortable and acceptable for the ideas mm-hmm. 
so if let's say someone is saying certain incidents certain uh, programs or certain ideas which is not so i mean uh, applicable also i'll be looking at it how can improve so what i have it is the practice i have it is to build a person's confidence instead of pointing out what can be uh, can be been wrong so it's inspiring a person it's important i call it it build break build build means is giving the ideas i mean how you can improve uh, inspire them break means find what are the areas of improvement give the suggestion to them all right so that suggestion will be again build their confidence So right it's a build break build and but the third build i'm assuming you build it stronger and better than the first right yeah right that's lovely um and also i remember you saying that it's a it's certainly it, it demonstrates the qualities of a team player you know having to not just make decisions or make the big calls for yourself but accepting input as a whole from and making sure you're getting the right kinds of feedback from the right people isn't that important oh yes absolutely because see as you are thinking only one point when you are driving or you are looking at it it's your uh, position mean uh, thoughts will be only one way but there are 10 people are there 10 different way of thinking and that really helps in the way you are uh, going for to achieve your goal right so sometimes you you might be doing a task and i think a lot of us might have experienced it uh, we might have an idea or a particular way of accomplishing something right but another person might have a different idea or a different way of accomplishing the same task so i think at any given moment it's valuable to see different perspectives on the same issue wouldn't you agree yes i do agree mm. so i think it's va- another valuable lesson that we can all learn as well so thank you for that sharing uncle So moving on to our next point of discussion actually. So when and where exactly did you realize that Swami is as much a part of you yourself as he is in everyone else around us? Okay, it started from the day one of I'm being I'm seeing mm. all right that diversity. Yeah, so <laughs> that one thing that's where it is I said it is oh you made it me happen because like I can't imagine how that could happened followed with another major event of another event also it's given a, a task so is in a rotation basis given it's another role as a camp commandant so again it is to, uh, able to uh, carry that task which is given successfully and um, with this without less sleep for probably two days so those days you don't have uh, all the technologies all cassettes so I have to record Uh, from sundaram bhajan's uh, duplicate into a uh, audio rmi cassettes and give it to people so i'll be doing continuously and lots of think uh, i realize it's only mid possible because i dare to take the risk and uh, i know it is achievable but eventually the achievement it is when you look at it it's a miracle right so it's truly inspirational what you've been able to uh, achieve this all this whole time right with all that uh it shows as well just how much uh, it's not a simple thing as people make it seem sound to seem uh but you actually have to put in a lot of effort to to prevail in something like this uh people often say service starts small you can start with anything small but to truly put your whole heart into it and by doing it in essence you are finding that especially when you are doing something uh, for for spirituality uh, for sai right in the sai organization uh, you realize that you are not alone you're not on your own behind everything that you do with the right intention with the love uh, swami is always behind it right so coming back to my sai and i uh, i i'd say it's more accurate to say as our sai and us uh, i sort of my sai and i putting the the label on ourselves uh i'd say it's a, it's a two stage thing so the first step is to recognize sai within us oh sai is within me uh so i am sai as well and from there it extends outwards oh sai is not just in me sai is in you and you and you and everyone so it's sai and us uh, i i think The perfect word that summarizes this whole thing is uh, the way Swami always addresses his speeches with Prema Swarupalara. 
uh, which literally translates to the embodiments of love. So the way that Swami himself addresses each and every one of his devotees as embodiments of love, uh, I think elegantly and beautifully shows that from the very beginning, Swami knew, Swami knew that we had the divinity within us, that we were as much a part of him as he was a part of us. And he was addressing, addressing us that way from the very beginning. Uh, it was we, we were the ones who were blinded by the ego, the I, yeah, the I, uh, this belongings to me. Uh, I have my own name, I have my own thoughts, my own consciousness. Uh, but the second stage, as I mentioned, coming to the realization that Sai is not just me, Sai is everyone. So the embodiment of the spirit of love, Prema Surupalara, I think that sums it up very, very beautifully. Right, Anka? So I think before we close our episode, I'd say uh, it's been such a wonderful sharing that you've been able to give us today. But one thing I would like to ask you, uh, and also as advice to the younger generation more specifically, and also to anyone listening, what advice could you give for anyone who perhaps hasn't been able to cross that first stage of finding that Sai within themselves? How would they or could they become closer to Sai to find Swami? Okay. Very important and it's very uh, unique the way you have look at the situations. Okay. Um, See, when you start driving, you are, see, usually after, I mean, you finish your, when you are age 17 plus, you'll start to take driving license. So after that, you'll be a driver. So what kind of expectation the public has the moment you have your license and after you have the license? You already have license, new driver, P, you have. And after that, what you have? Mm -hmm. An experienced driver, all right? Or a senior, very skilled driver kind of things. But the public expectation or the law always the same. Whether you are P older, uh, I mean a learner, I mean a older, or an experienced uh, driver. That's how you have to look at it. You have to make everything. There is always, there is a first for any incidents. So when you are given a role, keep it very simple. Keep it very simple and enjoy the, what you're doing. See, the thing here is, we always have a kind of enthusiasm to achieve, to chase something. The moment we achieve that, and after that, the enthusiasm goes. Mm. So our expectation, our desire changes or increases. As it increases, we have to modify our needs. So you have to continuously have that kind of inspirations, okay, the joiners in you, by make it simple. You got to be enjoy what you're doing, make it simple, and then it is must be able to say any work, be it in organization or outside, if you're able to say yes, and who is the benefit uh, beneficiary? You are given the opportunity. Why the opportunity is given to you? Because in trust on you, you can able to do it. If you can delegate, you can delegate to others. If you can't delegate, you can achieve that result as well. So this is what is going to be happen when you say yes. Usually, people it is think twice. Uh, uh, let me think. Let me discuss. Let me check. Mm -hmm. All this, this ah uh, ah uh syndrome. It's what make you do not have blind faith on Swami. Right. You got to have a faith of a blind man in Swami and just Swami, you guide me. I'm taking this. All right. It could be a job opportunity. It could be, and you want to your. Uh, I mean, um, furthering your studies or kind of things. But the trick here it is. You got to put your effort. Right. You just just take it and you can't relax. Just take your effort and do it. And um, always be consistent. It is see, this is what uh, some of the uh, satsang that said it is you got to be a marathoner. So you run, you run like a marathon, so you got to have a consistent momentum all the while. It is not like a sprinter. A sprinter runs hundred meters or sixty meters, after that he retires. So we want in the organization a person is consistent. When you're consistent, a, a beautiful moment I would like to say here. Five years ago, if you've seen me, probably today is my fifth, I mean, uh, anniversary or my death anniversary. Could be. Because I was in dead bed. All right. What it is made me to come back to take the second birth, it is 
only the activities and only the involvement in the organization I had, the whole nation, even overseas, people are prayed for me to recover. And I have lots of ex personal experiences to share how that particular incident happened. All right? That's where I can see Swami being in, uh, in me and protecting me in ICU hospital, in the hospital. Right? So, and then it's a miraculously, a lot of things also happened. Many people do not know how I recovered that fast. It's very deadly as COVID. It's a pneumonia. It's very deadly as COVID, but I recovered. Everything is, was given in the silver spoon. All right. The silver plate was given. It is just because of the things I've done, which is never expected before. Example. Admitted, went to high dependency ward, went to ICU, in two weeks, discharged from ICU, given first class ward in Klang GH, which is very, very difficult to get, next to Royal Ward. Mm. And the doctor who treated me from ICU, he came and visited me in uh, ward. Normally, ICU doctors don't come over there. That's the period of time the ICU, I mean, uh, department, had a food poisoning, which just came out in newspaper. The only doctor who didn't get food poisoning, it is the doctor who treated me. Wow. And because that day he's being vegetarian. Because of that. So there's a lot of things that happen. So what you got to do is, you don't look for a medicine when you're sick. So you prepare yourself. You prepare yourself and just do it as it comes. It's a, it's a journey and end of the day, you will be seeing the result later. So what the summary here is, instead of whatever thing you are searching, making your spiritual bank grow. That spiritual bank give multiple uh, returns to you when right time comes. Right. Um, keeping it simple. Well, there you have it. <laughs> it's easier said than done, honestly. Uh, but I think it was, it couldn't have been put in better words by you, uncle. That's very, very, it was valuable information there. Um, you also said something along the lines of putting in effort as well. It's never easy, but you really have to put in the effort. Uh, saying yes to new opportunities, even if you're unsure that you can, whether you are able to pick up the responsibility. Uh, it's say yes first and then figure out later. Not figure out first and then say yes later, right? Um, so, and one final thing to summarize uh, and uh, sum up our, our session for today. Um, no, I, I just thought of sharing some a funny experience that I've had with Swami recently that makes me think about uh, the fact that we are all one, essentially, right? Uh, many, I think oftentimes we can all relate when we have situations that we can have a minor inconvenience about something, a very small inconvenience, could be big, could be small. And we complain to Swami. We're like, oh, why? Why God? Why is this happening to me? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And it's easy to point fingers, point fingers at Swami. Why you didn't do this? Why? Why is it raining today? Why did my clothes get wet? Or why did this person not come to work today? Why did my dog eat my homework? As, along the such lines of that. And oftentimes, if we are really aware, and we, are, we know, we are aware of the fact that the Swami is in a Swami is around us. Uh, it's been more than once on several occasions where I've had that very thought, that minor inconvenience happen at, a random point of day and I'm looking around and wouldn't you believe it there's a picture of Swami somewhere staring right at me with that smile <laughs> it's like you like it now Bangaro <laughs> and at the very same time uh, just a second later it is resolved a resolution comes to mind uh, whatever inconvenience or problem that you had a solution just springs to your head uh, you know how to handle it. it. It just, it happens. It's quite unexplainable uh, if you're really trying to be rational about it. If you really think about it, because it, it really comes out of nowhere. Uh, because you've spent this duration pondering about the problem. Oh, how am I going to overcome this? Oh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? But all of a sudden, that moment of clarity just snaps and all becomes clear. And I think that relates back to what you said, just having that blind faith in Swami. And I think Swami loves poking fun at us when we do not have oh, such yes. blind faith. So it's like, well, 
if you had blind faith, you would know from the beginning, but I'm going to make you wait. <laughs> wait for what you want, <laughs> right? So that's something that I just wanted to uh, quickly share. Right. So how about you, Uncle? Do you have any similar funny stories or incidents that happened with Swami? Okay. Always that first moments in your life, you can't remember, I mean, I can't forget forever. So this is similarly. Uh, 1993 was my first visit to Puttaparthi. Um, I still remember I paid 1,880 ringgit for the mass air, air flight. The flight ticket was so expensive. And this is 1993. Just imagine it is uh, probably it's about four months salary. Yeah. And I managed to pay the ticket. And then a few days before I want to fly, I don't even have money. Yeah. But somehow or other, I have done some work for somebody. And that payment came. So just nice with this thousand ringgit in my hand, I went to Parthi. I went there, it is saw Swami the first time. Uh, first darshan, probably that was a second darshan, I think. It's so afternoon. So I saw Swami in blue. The person who I could rather call him, it's my mentor, Dr. Rama, is crying. So I can't ask him. And then after that, I just keep thinking, why Swami came in a different color? Now he's look at blue. Mm. Is it because of a sun rays uh, reflecting to my me or like that? A lot of uh, this kind of monkey mind questions coming there. All right. And then later, uh, I realized after reading uh, some materials, so the first book I read there in four days, it is my Baba and I. So that kind of things. So the funny incident it is, first I'm questioning it is why Swami is look like that. Later I realize Swami it is Viswarupa, it can give uh, darshans in any um, forms, any mm. means. The thing it is, as I'm being active sportsman, I don't have a time. Social life, I don't have at all. Because I don't have social life, and at that point of time, I'm 21 years old. 21 years old. So all my friends have girlfriends. I'm staying in KL and they always say, it is, you are going to have a tough time to find your bride. <laughs> so this is where it is. The fear is there. And I told Swami, Swami, can you get me a lady who is suitable for me? <laughs> all right. 28 September 1993. 28 September 1994, one year exactly after that, I met my wife. Oh. All right. So I asked that particular time and after that, I didn't do anything. I forgot about and entire things. When I reflecting back, that's where I realized, hey, it's the very same day. All right. It is God gift. Mm. So it's how this is that important things happen in my life and I think it is the most... Uh, Remarkable thing in my life. Mm. That was actually very, very <laughs> beautiful, Uncle. <laughs> the, the story of how you met your wife, basically. Um, it's more down to asking the right questions than expecting the right answer, right? So if we don't ask the right questions, we can't expect uh, the right answers, right? But, wow, well, uh, I am touched by that story, Uncle. That was very, very beautiful. <laughs> Such a lovely sharing. And... I believe with that, that concludes our podcast for today. Uh, thank you so much, Uncle. It's been such an honor, such a pleasure having you here. Uh, truly, you are a shining beacon of inspiration to everyone you've come in contact with, myself included. Uh, it is such an honor to, to work with you and to listen to all the things you've had to say and share. And thank you all too for listening to our very first episode uh, of season two of our Chai with Sai podcast. We have obtained so much love and support from all of you for the first season and we would like to do more for all of you and your love makes our work possible. So thank you and stay tuned for episode two. Jai Sai Ram. Sai Ram. <laughs>